In this video, I'm going to reformulate the income statements of both Nike and Starbucks. Reformulating the income statement is quite a bit easier and less time consuming than doing the balance sheet because the income statement is actually set up uh, mostly to report the earnings from operations separately from earnings from financial activities. Now, Nike doesn't report a specific line for operating income. Most companies do. But we see that below total selling and administrative expense comes interest expense. Interest ex expense clearly is a, a financial expense. We see below that a line called other income or expense. Uh, we're not sure what that relates to. Um, we might want to go to the footnotes and see if they give any more information. Or we can assume that since it's below the operating information reported above, that it is related to financial income and expenses. And that's what we'll do here is we'll just treat it as, as related to financial. So I'm going to start by giving putting in a subtotal for operating income. And operating income is equal to the sales revenue minus cost of sales and the two selling expenses I see here, demand creation expense and operating overhead expense. Or I could just simply take the company's gross profit subtotal and from that subtract the total selling and administrative expense to get operating income. Now what we want to do is look at operating income after tax. That is the only information that is um, a little bit trickier to come up with. What we essentially want to do is take this, move these subtotals down here. So now I have my operating information. Here's my financial information. I want to figure out how much of this tax expense relates to operating income and how much of it relates to the financing income or expense. So what I need to do is figure out what is this company's effective tax rate. And I do not need net income for that. I'm going to hold on to my net income to use as a check figure. I'm going to hide that down here. And I want to focus on this effective tax rate is the company's income tax expense as a percentage of income before taxes, the number that drives the income tax expense. And I see that Nike has quite a low income tax, or uh, sorry, quite a low effective tax rate, 13% in the most recent year, 19% and 22% in the two prior years. And what I want to do is I want to allocate this income tax expense towards operating income and the interest expense and other income, fin the financing income. So I'm going to create a line for income tax on operating income and simply take the amount of my operating income and multiply it by the effective tax rate that we just calculated. We want to be very careful when we're doing this and pay close attention to the fact that if the company had had an operating loss here, we wouldn't have income tax expense. We would have an income tax benefit. We would decrease the loss. So we want to pay close attention to what these numbers are, whether they're positive and negative, and remember that losses lead to uh, income tax benefits and gains uh, will uh, and gains will lead to or income will lead to income tax expense. And then we are going to calculate our operating income after tax. Sometimes this is called the net operating profit after tax or no path. Operating income less income tax expense. Here is the shareholders view of what was earned from operations. Now let's look at financing expense since they write their expense uh, out and income in parentheses if we get a negative number which we see here so the sum here is a negative number and again we want to pay close attention different companies are going to report differently some might have an expense in parentheses and an income regular so we want to really think about what the information is here that the company is reporting all right so the company had uh, oh this is nope if it's negative it is income so the company is reporting interest and other income or financing income in each of the of the three years so the oops the tax 
We're going to calculate the tax on financing income. And obviously we can do one of two things. We can multiply our financing expense times the tax rate, or we can simply say if income tax expense for 2017 was 646 and we allocated 628 to operating income, clearly that difference 18 is going to be allocated towards the financing section. All right, now although this, this is shown as negative, we have to interpret these numbers with caution. They're simply showing negative because that's how the company reported their income as negative. So our tax is not a negative tax. It is a tax expense. So the financing expense after tax is equal to, we want to report that it was $137 million of financing income and we want to reduce that by the 18 million in income taxes so we get financing income of 119 now it's shown as negative but this is income we have to keep that in mind when we do our final calculation which is net income. So what is net income? It's a company earned 4121 in operating income after tax. And I'm going to have to do a negative here simply because this is actually a positive 119. This additional income. It's the formatting that Nike is using here that makes it a little tricky. So if I subtract a negative, I'm actually adding the 119 to the 4121. And I get 4240. I can check that to my check figure that I left down here. The traditional um, method of reporting shows our net income. All of our numbers agree. And our income statement has been reformulated. Now let's go to Starbucks. All right, so again, we have out oh, here, Starbucks just gives us an amount for operating income. Let's assume that we can classify everything else here as all of these items here as financing. And then the rest of this data we want for other purposes. All right, so we are going to I want to think about what is the company's save that for check figures. What is the company's effective tax rate? Divide income tax expense by what drives income tax expense. Earnings before income taxes times the effective tax rate. We are just using the other two variables to come up with what is that effective tax rate. And if we take this out, we see it's about 33% in the last two years, and that sounds quite reasonable. All right, so let's figure out what is operating income after tax. Take my operating income and multiply it by the effective tax rate. And then label my subtotal operating income after tax equal to operating income before tax less the income tax expense. All right, and then from financing, let's call this the net financing. Now here we see Starbucks is doing exactly the opposite of what Nike does. They're recording their incomes as uh, reporting their incomes as positive and their expenses as negatives. So I'm going to see net financing income in each of these subtotals. Okay, so next we need to figure out what is the tax that needs to be out tax expense to be allocated to the financing income. Take my net financing income, multiply it by the effective tax rate, and this is going to be tax expense. If this line here had been net financing expense, meaning the interest expense was greater than any interest revenue or other revenues, then we would have a tax benefit 
in line 21 here, not a tax expense. We would reduce the expense. But here we have income, so our financing after tax is equal to the difference between the net financing income and the tax expense. And then let's include a subtotal here to show net income. Operating income after tax plus financing income after tax. Let's check to make sure I didn't make any errors. Let's check this to the as reported net income. This would be before non controlling interests. And indeed, these numbers do agree. But what if we change an assumption here? I kept talking about if uh, this net financing income, if that was um, actually a net ex financing expense, how would that affect our tax expense calculation and our financing income after tax? So let's copy this worksheet and look at a hypothetical situation. Let's just this hypothetically. Let's say that interest income in each of these years was gone, disappeared. Now what we have is financing expense after tax. We have net financing expense here in each of these three years. So we have an expense, oh, not in this last year, in each of these two years, we have net financing expense shown as negative. Now, our tax expense on financing income is still going to be the expense times the effective tax rate, but we want to just see that when we calculate our financing expense after tax, our expense gets smaller by the amount of this isn't really tax expense. This is really a tax benefit when it's negative. And when it's positive, it is a tax expense. I hope you enjoyed the video and what I recommend doing after this is going to um, the documents that are posted on Blackboard in the week eight material. We also have some notes for you to read, some notes that I clipped from the textbook that kind of reinforce the topics that I've discussed in these videos and some practice questions that have the solutions at the end of them. That's all for now, and I'll have more videos posted for next week.